Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to show you a tying tutorial of the Jigged Biot Stone Nymph. So this fly is going to be tied on one of my favorite hooks today. This is the TMC competition style C450 BL. Then we're going to use a little bit of Vivas thread to tie this, the Tenot Brown color. The head of our fly is going to be a slotted tungsten bead in black. We're going to weight it a little bit using the 015 diameter lead wire here. Our tail and our antennas are going to be some goose biots, the stripped goose biots in brown. Then the main body of our fly today will be the turkey biots, also in brown. Um, from there, we're going to add some legs. We're going to use some partridge feathers for the legs. We're going to use some ice dub and pheasant tail for the thorax and then some medallion sheeting for the backing on this fly. All right, so we start off here. I have my bead fixed on that hook there, the tungsten slotted bead, as well as that lead wire, the 015 diameter lead wire here. I'm just gonna slide that towards the back, get it out of the way for now, so that we can tie in our antennas. And so I'm gonna start my thread, just a few locking wraps. I wanna make sure not to build up too much bulk so that we can slide the bead over the antenna once we get them tied in there. So I'm gonna do them one at a time. I'm gonna take my first one here and I'm gonna lay it just across the shank, right across the, the bend in the jig style here and tie it in right on the side. And fix that down and then we can clip out the excess here. You can see I'm not going too tight just because of that bulk. I wanna get the other one tied in before I really cinch them down and, and maximize my thread wraps here. So I'll come back in on the other side and do the same thing. Just like so. You just wanna flare them away from each other just slightly there. Give the illusion of antenna. Okay, so now I'm gonna snug them down real good. That looks like they're in a good position to me. So I'm gonna take my whip finish and just a couple of quick whip finishes here again trying not to build bulk and then we can clip out our thread and I always like because there's not a whole lot of thread wraps or whip finishes I always add just a little bit of a zap again just a little small amount keep everything fixed there and then we can slide our bead up on top of that and over the antenna so that's fixed nicely there we can bring our lead wire up in and press it up against it in that bead. Keep that locked in place as well. And then start working on the, the main body of our fly. So we'll th start our thread behind the lead. And just make a quick little ramp like we do every time we work with lead. So that we can maintain a nice taper to the fly as well. We'll go up on it and lock it in just quickly like that. And then we can come back and add the tails. So again, the same material we used on the antenna, these goose biots, but I'm gonna make them a little bit longer for the tails, right about the shank of the body there. And we're gonna flare them outward this time. Try that one in there, bring the other one on the other side. Measure it out, just make sure it's the same length here. And tie it in as well. So whenever I'm tying in buyout tails, I like to kind of work back on them. And I just keep my thumb in between them to keep them flaring how I like them. You can play with them and get them to do what you need them to. I'm gonna leave the tag ends of these buyouts in just up to the lead. It's gonna help kind of even out my body here as I work up. And because I'm doing the buyout body, I wanna make sure that I have nice even, a nice even taper, just like you would when you're doing a Copper John, pheasant tail, anything where you're gonna wrap the body and not dub it, then you wanna make sure you have a clean thread brace, clean thread base underneath. So we'll take our thread up and back, and then we can come in here. So I'm gonna build up just a little bit more of a taper. 
before we tie on that nice long turkey biome. Yeah. So hopefully you can see that there. This is the, uh, the nice long side, the barbels that are off of the quill here, the biots. Um, they're nice and long, but you can see they're a little bit more brittle. On this opposite side here, these ones are folded up, but they're a little bit nicer. They're, they're stronger. They're nice and long in the center section. I really prefer to use these because you get a much nicer look out of it when you tie with this side as opposed to this side. You can use these, but these are quite a bit nicer. So I have one. I, I took it off of the quill here. You can see just the full length of it. I'm going to tie this in so that the bevel is facing outward. And then what that does is as you fold it over and wrap it, it'll be a nice smooth body as opposed to having some of that texture that you can get. You can do it either way. It just depends on what look you're after in the, fly, in the, the finished fly. So we'll tie that in on the side here and take our fly or our thread all the way up to the head of the fly or to where that thorax is gonna be. And then we can half hitch it out a couple times here. Throw it on our bobbin cradle and start to wrap that biot up. So I like to do mine just straight biot bodies. You can also add a little bit of wire ribbing if you'd like, just for durability of the fly. Uh, but I really like the look of the biot by itself. And before I forget here, get ahead of myself, I'm gonna moisten this really nicely just because it makes it a lot easier to wrap. These uh, turkey biots, goose biots as well, can be really brittle when they're dry. So I'm using just a little bit of saliva. You could soak them for a second and uh, a little bit of water as well just to make it uh, easier to tie on. So once I have that ready to go, I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here. Of the biot and then we're just going to palmer it forward so as you see as I wrap it around I want to make sure that it's laying the way that I want it to here with the bevel down and those first couple wraps you are going to get something to flare a little piece to flare and so I just barely cover those up as I start to work forward and then as you go forward you can space it a little bit more and then you get that nice two-tone coloration from these biots. Reposition my hackle pliers just to give myself a little bit more working room on that. There we are. So up to the thorax region here. And then we'll capture it with our thread. And then we can come back and tie in our backing material. So we'll snip out that excess there. Just like so, clean that up a little bit here. So there's different schools of thought on a jig style hook, whether or not you wanna put your backing on, on traditionally what would be the back or on the jig style, what kind of becomes the back the way you fish it. I always like to do it on the inside. Just be aware you don't want to shrink your hook gape too much, obviously. On these kind of nice competition style hooks, you have such a great big gape anyways. You have some room to work with there. So I'm going to flip it over, reposition it upside down. I like to use the vise just to separate my tails and kind of keep them going the way that I like them to there. But then we're going to come back in with some of this nice medallion sheeting. This is a really cool material that they have just the textured look that you get, you can see there is really cool. So I have a strip um, that's probably about the size of the hook gape here. I'm gonna take that and fold it in half. And I just want to make it a little bit more durable than it would be by itself. And then we can come in and tie this down here. So just right on the back, you can see that hook, you gotta kinda work, it around, work around it a little bit here. So we're going to spin our bobbin and get that nice loop wrap to go the right way for me so it's a little bit easier. But right on top of the hook shank here, I like to just pull it up as I go back because it keeps it on top versus wrapping around the sides. 
and then we're just going to find our positioning probably go back right to about where that hook point is not quite half of the hook shank and then we can start to dub our thorax under underbody here so for that i'm using a bit of the pheasant tail dubbing the ice dub pheasant tail color it's a really nice brown and orange combination gives a really good look to this fly so i'm going to dub in a noodle and i'm going to start with just a little bit because then we're going to work on a couple of sections of legs for this fly so i'm going to dub and check and we'll see where my biots are going just a little bit in the back here actually that's a little too much let's go back down a little bit just like so and then i'm going to come in with my partridge feathers and do the first set of legs and so with this partridge feather i clipped off the bottom part down here where there would be nice a bunch of duff and then I'm going to come in and clip out a V. We'll clip out the stem, the quill there, whatever you want to call it. And leave ourselves with just the barbel sticking out. And it gives you something like that. There you go, you can see I have a nice nice V to tie in. I like them to be a little bit longer than if you were doing maybe a Copper John or something like that, just because it is a stone nymph or a stonefly nymph, so I want them to be pretty leggy. So the first set, I'm gonna come right back to where that dubbing is and tie them in. I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna tie it in just a little bit long. I'm gonna do a couple of loose wraps there and then position it how I want it, and I can kind of pull the feather back just a little bit as needed to get the length of the legs that I want there. And I want them to be a little bit long, not quite the length of my body there, but some nice long, buggy looking legs. So we'll tie that in, clip out our excess here. Just like so, we're gonna dub a little bit more, just like we had done before for our second set of legs. So again, just a nice tight dubbing noodle, as tight as you can get it with the ice dub. Ice dub's always a little bit harder to get in a tight noodle, but with a little bit of wax, it helps a lot. So we'll dub that. Just like so, a little bit of separation between our two sets of legs here. And then same step we did just a second ago, tying in another partridge feather. Now you could probably get away with just the one feather. I just think it gives it um, a much more leggy fly. So more movement. All that good stuff that you want with a stone fly floating down the river that might be making its way to the to the bank to to its next stage, its fly stage. So same thing, got that prepped, gonna lock it in. I want them to be right about the same length as the other legs, maybe just slightly shorter. Pull them to where I want them, and then lock them in there and clip out the extra. Okay, so we got that locked in. We're gonna just clean our thread up and dub out a little bit more. Make sure those legs are set where I want them. That looks good. A little bit more of the I stub peacock right up on the front. So this is a great anchor fly, a nice weighted fly if you're uh, getting into any Euro style nymphing. This is a good one if, the, if you're in a deep pool, maybe a fast run uh, that you need to get down fast, this will help you do it. And then you can have 
you know, maybe a smaller Betis Midge, whatever, whatever other style imitation you might be um, trying to get after at the time. So once we have those legs tied in, I'm going to bring this medallion sheeting up and just snag it right behind the bead here, pulling it nice and tight. Just like so, clip out the excess of it. And then all we gotta do here is whip finish. And with the whip finish, we'll try and cover up that excess material there. Just like so. There is your completed. Let's flip it around for you here, make it a little nicer to see. There's the finished Biot Stone Nymph. So this is a brown color. You could do it in yellows, um, some tans, different, whatever stonefly imitation you're trying to, or stonefly nymph you're trying to imitate. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. If you have a fly you'd like to see us tie in the future, leave us a comment below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there. My heart over my mind. I'm not over.